There are many different types of spray valves in the world. Big, small, manually operated, electrically operated. However, they all share a same basic operation. In this video, we will be overhauling a Transland 2238-4 model valve. The valve is made up of an assortment of different parts. The main parts we will focus on are the ball, the seals, the shaft, the screen, the suckback screw, as well as the shims. The first step in the process of servicing a spray valve is to feel the movement of the shaft and valve the lever that attaches to the shaft of the spray valve. Is it too loose, too tight? Does it have any side play? Make a note of uh, how the valve feels before you start disassembling, because we will be referring to this later. Now that you have established the condition of the valve, uh, mark the position of the control arm on the body of the valve. Once marked, remove the control arm by loosening the bolt and sliding the arm up over the shaft. Next, punch out the roll pin holding the shaft into place. Use caution while removing the pin as it can gall up the shaft and scar up the bushings in the body of the valve. Once the roll pin is removed, pull the shaft out of the body. Now remove the four cap screws holding the cover plate and remove the cover. Make a note of how many shims are installed on that cover plate. Remove the cam lock end of the valve by removing the four bolts and gently pry the fitting out of the body. Again, make note of the amount of shims that were installed in the original setup. Make note of the position of the ball in the body. The ball can be installed 180 degrees out of position and the, if this does happen the ball valve will still turn on and off but you will have no suck back. So just take a, make a note of the position of that ball as you remove it and put it in the same manner. Clean the valve body, the ball, the shaft, the cam lock fittings and remove any built up chemical or corrosion you may see. A scotch bright or fine sandpaper will help this. Again, remove any burrs that you may have caused with a screwdriver on the flat face surfaces of the cam lock plate or the side plate, or again, remember the burrs that the roll pin can have possibly created from hours and hours of service. Once the parts have been cleaned thoroughly and replacement parts acquired, you can start the assembly process. Keep in mind if O-rings are replaced, they must be lubed and seated in properly. To properly seat the O-rings, take an O-ring pick and run it around the inside of the O-ring a few times to remove any rolling that may have occurred during installation. First install the outlet main seal. You can use a small amount of grease on the back of the seal to hold it in place if needed. Next install the ball. It is crucial that the ball is be installed in the correct orientation. Install the ball with a small side hole facing the cover plate side of the valve. 
while the two larger openings face the intake and outflow ends of the valve. Once the ball is installed in the proper orientation, install the shaft Now that the shaft is installed, lock it into place with the roll pin. Again, using a small amount of grease, place the main seal onto the cam lock fitting. Ensure you have shims in place and the o-ring is lubed. Press the cam lock down onto the valve and install the bolts. This is a critical part of the install. The seals can easily shift out of position and the seals can be damaged and will leak if not installed correctly. Next install the chafing washer and then the control arm by lining up the marks we made during the disassembly process. Now check the tension of the valve lever. Ideally it should be fairly snug but not so tight that you need two hands to move it. Just a fair bit of drag uh, that tells you you've got the right amount of tension produced by the cam lock cap end with the proper amount of shims underneath the o-ring. Now install the bypass seal. At this stage we will refer to our notes to install the required amount of shims on the side plate. This is where we fine tune the tension on the ball. Once the ball tension feels good, just a little bit more tension with the added uh, friction of the side plate nylon bushing, then you can go ahead and tighten the cap screws. The final tension is sort of critical. If you have too much, you're going to, too much pressure, it's going to be tight, plus it's going to want to shift the valve a little bit out of the alignment of the of the two center bigger nylon bushings. Not enough of course and uh, it's the nylon seal isn't doing its job so you have to make sure that with the addition of that last cover plate you 
have just slightly more tension than without it, then that makes it basically the, the proper tension. Suck back. It is used to put a negative pressure on the spray system downstream of the valve. When set to, to the proper position, it reduces the loss of chemical that may otherwise leak out of the check valves and nozzles. To set the suck back, loosen the lock nut and screw the suck back screw all the way into the body. Once bottomed, back the screw out one and a half turns and lock into place with the lock nut. You should now see a negative pressure on your boom pressure when the spray, spray off position is selected during flight. We found that if the valve is operating properly, that's really all, all you should really need is one and a half turns at the most. Uh, your suck back may have been set out more to uh, compensate for a, a valve that is uh, uh, having some bypass issues or some leaking issues. Remember, as you're overhauling the spray valve, uh, there is two ports in the, in the spray valve system one directly in line with the adjusting screw and then one just uh, inside the threaded part of the valve that goes 90 degrees to the to the uh, and enters into the uh, boom side of the spray valve uh, if you look at the cutaway drawing that we have on display you'll easily see what i mean by the 90 degree port so uh, Congratulations, you have now successfully serviced a spray valve. Good luck in, uh, in the spray season. This is tough, Andrew.